here, but I am going to record this anyway and send you the link in case you wanted to. Uh, <clears throat> All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. We may have some people continue to join us virtually uh, for our Focus Friday program, including, I don't know about uh, our presenting sponsor, <laughs> I know Vaughn. Uh, I do know Kristen wasn't going to be here, so if Mike comes in, maybe we'll catch him up to tell him. But uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, Dave Yoakum, Business Day Cornelius today is one of our sponsors. Dave, thank you. Uh, since you have the floor, you want to say something about what's going on with Big Day at the Lake? Because we probably have some fundraisers coming up. Well, sure. We uh, had our first picnic meeting. Our, the event is July 20 this year. And so we had our first meeting on Tuesday night at our house. And um, it's awesome. We're expecting 150 kids this year, more than last year. And that means around 125 boats are needed. And then the picnic is at the uh, Energy Explorium at 1. And how much money was raised last year? Oh, gosh. I want to say it was 140. What's the most we, you've ever raised for that? I think 150. Wow. We're getting back to where we were pre <laughs> So we're at 130 now. And you have next Newsmaker Breakfast lined up? No, not yet. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Beth, I'm going to turn it over to you and I'll go let other people in. Okay, great. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us for another Friday Focus. Um, our Springtime Friday Focus, which is going to have our presenters are the directors of our three towns, Parks and Rec. Thought it appropriate as spring, spring comes around, people come more go more outside that we learn a little bit more about our Parks and Rec and what they do. And um, I, I certainly have the understanding that they're much more than just Parks and Rec. They go They go deep into everything that our communities do every day and need from mental health to education to camps, children, um, planning, transportation planning, they're involved in every aspect of what touches us on an individual basis and want to raise them up certainly in the business community too, so that our businesses understand and recognize what Parks and Rec does for them and how our members of our chamber can better engage and use, utilize our Parks and Rec facilities and team and promoting North Mac. So, um, as I said, we have the three towns. Uh, ladies first seems to be the way I like to start the introductions, and I'll introduce you all. And then, what I'd love to do is just give you a, give you a few minutes to kind of give a state of the union address or your thoughts on your town, and then we'll roll into a, a very casual sort of open question and answer conversation. So, Leslie Willis, and of course, I had the pleasure of working with Leslie came to Davidson in 2011, is that right? Mm -hmm. I think, as um, maybe our assistant parks and rec director, she came from Angeles, well, she went to Angeles State University and then got her master's of science at Bemidji, did I get it right? Mm -hmm. University in Minnesota. I did look it up, but I didn't get the right pronunciations. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but she was our assistant parks and rec, rec director for many years and took over the helm um, uh, what year did you take over the directorship? Um, 2020, 21. Okay, so uh, 12 plus years with us, and both Michael and Troy are 25 plus years, so we have over 50 years worth of Marks and Rec knowledge, which <laughs> if you stop for just a minute and think about the change in this area, we all recognize certainly the population growth and the population change, but just sort of geographically and phys the physical landscape of what has changed in this area from undeveloped, overdeveloped parks, um, passive parks, open parks, greenways, everything that's come on in the last 25 years, these folks have been a part of. So for that, I thank you all very much. And Leslie, you wanted to open up with things, Davidson? Sure. Thank you, first of all, for um, inviting me to come and the rest of our Northern Town Parks and Rec, um, because we, we we do work together, and we'll talk about that. Uh, Davidson is we're in a, an exciting place in Parks and Recreation. We're updating our master plan. It's ten years old. It was done last in twenty fourteen, and um, it's interesting. It will be interesting to see the outcomes that we get from our public meetings that we've been having, and and what are how our master plan will change from twenty fourteen. Obviously, with the change with the pandemic. Uh, and um, 
before we were heavy greenway use. And I, I think that will still be important. And I think that's more important today as we start to look into the sustainability realm and, and move in that direction of trying to get people walking. And the more we can connect our greenway systems throughout towns, Mecklenburg County, to the other counties that surround us, uh, I think the better we're going to be. And so I, I, I see us still moving in a greenway aspect. But in Davidson, we look at seven dimensions of wellness and we look at the whole person and i think that's going to continue we're going to change some of our dimensions a little bit but we we feel that you can be physically fit but you're not going to be fully happy there's more in life that comes with that physical financial economical art sustainability um social and so putting that all together and um, I think our master plan will go from greenways, but also add some active because as you see, pickleball, we talk about it regularly, is coming. Um, so finding that balance between passive and active within our area and being the farthest north, we really also take pride in conservation of land and farm and space. And so being north, we hope to continue to help the rest of the northern Mecklenburg area in that realm and with our open space. So that's kind of where we're at in our town. So. Well, you touched on about every question I have for you, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're done. I'm done. <laughs> and Troy, I um, enjoyed so much working with you. You were quite the educator, too, when I came on board with the greenways and whatnot. And I did bring my prop, which is my favorite now, oh, the yeah. emerald necklace for yeah. those on the emerald necklace. And I thought that was so clever. and. Um, it's beginning and and the way you've executed that is is has was quite an education when I sat down and listened to you talk about the funding and governmental funding and how how you have to work with the various agencies throughout whether it's county or state or federal to procure funding to complete all this um but the the only thing that I can say that I don't love about you is that you got your BS from UConn, but okay, congratulations. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Um, and then also the University of Hartford, I think, right? Correct. Correct? Yeah. And again, you came to her case 25 plus years ago. I, I came to Mecklenburg County 25 plus years okay. ago. I've been in Cornelius since 08. Okay, very good. Leading our parks and recs. So a few minutes of Cornelius. Yeah, so um, like Leslie just mentioned, they're in the process of updating their master plan. We just recently updated ours and had the Park Commission and Town Board approve it unanimously. And um, it's a very, very bold vision. Um, that you shown the Emerald Necklace, that was reinforced and the Greenway's pretty much on the state path, um, given what was done back in... Um, 2015, um, but on the park side, one thing, and Leslie touched on this, about preserving open space. Back in 15, that was very critical based on what we heard from the community. This time around, it was very critical that we preserve open space. Well, to preserve open space and provide natural areas, there's also the flip side of parks and recreation, which is active recreation. So now we have more of a proposed balance between the two, and uh, we're looking to get about 750 acres all together over the next 10 years. Right now we sit at about 450, so we, we've got a long way to go, but I'm excited to try to make that happen. That's great. That is great. Um, well, and Michael, as we move closer to Charlotte, you can touch on that as well, but Michael came from Florida State, correct? And you've yeah. been with uh, Hunter's uh, Hall. No, no dings about Florida State. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> you've been, you, you were the Assistant Parks and Rec Director from 99 to 07, 08, and then rolled into the leadership for Hunter's Hall. So again, um, uh, while all, all towns have changed dramatically, I would say Hunter's Hall probably has changed the most with what was once farmland, as we all knew, and, and population as well. You've seen the growth of all of that. So all things Huntersville. So we're in a little different position from a master plan standpoint than Cruz and Davis. We're about halfway into our park master plan after through 2020. Uh, the things we heard, and we kind of knew this, going into 2020, before that, we did a great job on active sports space. It was Bradford Park, Barry Park, Council Grant Center. Really, sports tournaments were a big thing, but also active space was heavily needed. 
but we heard the 2020 plan, people wanted those other things, such, such as trails, massive parks, parks that just aren't sports. That we heard that loud and clear, not only through the survey, but the comments were received. So we really have been pushing a lot more greenways here lately, and there's a lot more coming. Um, sports tours are still a big thing for us, but now it's fine, like they mentioned, found that balance between passive and active. We need both. Also, everybody knows that everybody's moved from different areas of the country. So we're seeing different trends. Obviously, pickleball is huge now, but even like street hockey has become pretty big in our parks now. So you accommodated that. Even we're seeing a large influx of cricket players as well all over our parks now. It used to be one park, but now they're everywhere. So that's another conversation. So even though our plan's only three or four years old, a lot has changed, even with the demographics of where people are coming from, their parks right now. So the plants, you got to be flexible as well. I realize that. So that's kind of where we're at. We're also excited that our bond passed back in November, 75% voters approved, which is the highest we've ever had. I think our previous two park bonds were like 66, 68%. So it's good to see that sports even grown over the years. So people understand. Yeah. Well, I thought you were going to stop at crickets. We've seen a large influx of crickets. <laughs> 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 okay, that's great. Um, so a couple of things. So one question that I didn't uh, one question that I had when I became involved in, in government work was passive versus active. And I will admit that I aired, as Leslie knows, on the active side. And Davidson had an overwhelming amount of passive park, which no one used and no one could access. It's the furthest point you can get away from anyone in the towns of Davidson, Cornelius, and Hunterville. North Mech was involved. We called it North Mech. North Mech owns the park. We manage at Fisher Farm, Aversham, and Allison, right? And that's 600 plus acres. And so at that time, um, it was recognized by me, certainly, that Davidson College was pulling back. We used to have access to Davidson College a little bit more, and understandably, in the environment, they pulled back, so we couldn't use their campus facilities, tennis courts, and such. And so we were at a great loss of, of active space. Um, it is interesting how you find the balance. And so does this define for me passive versus active because a passive part means you sleep in it to me, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing passive, you do nothing. But in, in a passive part setting is greenways, I assume, thinking spaces, which I, I just, I, I struggle with that term passive part. Yeah, yeah, I mean, to me, I... It, Mostly it's non-sports related, non-program right. space is the way I look at it. So it could be trails and I mean, I consider a playground kind of yeah. passive because it's active, yeah. but uh, outdoor fitness equipment, you know, just open lawn space at a park, yeah. non-program, non-structured. And so do you space. all lean in your, is in the, you, you really do lean on your master park. I mean, master plans, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where you, and the approach there Explain the approach. You put it out to citizens for comment. I'm sure you look at national statistics, which is another hard dynamic to to massage around what we need to do here because we're all different. Growth is here. Growth may not be somewhere else. So, how do you you all you've just been through it. You're completing it. And you're getting ready to start it. I guess what's what is the approach and what do you hope to accomplish and how many folks do you hope to engage in something like that? And does the business community get involved? I, I'll be glad to go first since we just wrapped up our our so we had six community listening sessions all together. We did them at lunchtime. We did them in the early evening, trying to be able to get folks that can come out. Some folks work second and shift, third shifts, so coming out at six, seven o'clock at night is out of the question. So we did that. We had well over a hundred folks come. Um, we also did a stratified random survey through University of North Carolina, Charlotte, to get 10% of the population to respond, and we were able to hit that goal. We then moved into just a regular open survey for everyone. Anyone could respond on that. And then lastly, we looked at national um, standards and benchmarks on that. So all together at the end of the day, we had nearly 500 folks tell us what they wanted in Cornelius, which in today's day and time, that's pretty good pretty in my book to get that many folks to come out and show how impassioned they are about parks. 
Um, the interesting thing that we found, I'll say this, when we looked at our peers across the country, we found that Cornelius was average, just average. Yet our comprehensive town master plan says that we aspire for the highest quality of life. Well, those two do not mesh up in my mind at all. If, if nationally we're average and we aspire for the highest quality of life, there, there, there's a big delta there. So that was an eye opener for us when we looked at that. And once we found that, we decided, okay, we want to push ourselves to be in the upper quartile. So like I said before, we're sitting at about 450 acres of parkland altogether, developed and undeveloped, but we're going to shoot for well over 700 in the end. And what could you identify was the difference between average and? So um, roughly round numbers, it was 14 acres per thousand population was average. And in the upper quartile, it was 18 acres okay, per that's thousand. That's interesting. Um, do we do y'all know the acreage in Davidson and, and Huntersville? Well, Huntersville is very confusing because there's a lot of park acreage because of nature's there's a lot of plantation. Uh -huh. So really it's skewed. It, I mean it looks like we do have right. tons of acreage of park land in Huntersville Sigelands because of the county. Right. Mm -hmm. And and Huntersville, we've relied heavily on the county to we haven't really purchased actually I've been here twenty-five <laughs> years. Up until last year we purchased a quarter of acre of park land. But the county has purchased hundreds of acres. So a lot of our parks, all of our biggest parks, we lease the land from Eckford County. We operate the park. Sometimes they'll help develop it, we'll jointly develop it, but we end up leasing a long-term lease and operate it. So we share our mass, I like everybody else, we share our mass plan with the county as well as they're looking for investments and so forth. Also for Huntersville, it's pretty unique. Well, not unique because everybody's joint use agreements, but we we have 11 joint use grants with four different school systems that covers gyms, tennis courts, soccer fields, baseball fields. So we know we have to, based on the growth, we have to find those partnerships to help keep up with the growth. So that's something we rely heavily on. So our plan keeps on talking about those partnerships, what are those partnerships before we build a park or buy a program, is there opportunities to partner with somebody? So we rely heavily on that. So. And Troy mentioned about the survey, and we also did a survey about 500 for, from the list of very well. I think we had maybe 600. Our last park master plan, we didn't get enough for the statistically valid survey we did previously. Um, the one thing when you do a master plan, because you've got groups who are, are really good and organized and come out and wipe your whole <laughs> meeting out, right. you know, that's why it's good to have that statistically valid survey. Because any master plan survey we've had that's not related to one group coming in, I think our top 10 requests of park amenities, only one was actually a sports related, and that was a pickleball on our last one. And I would assume the rest of us, greenways and trails, are always number one in all of our park surveys. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the, the, the acreage in Davidson? I mean, we're, we're weighted. We're heavy weighted with the Fisher Farm, Allison, Aversham. And again, that's county town. We own Fisher Farm, the county owns Aversham and Allison. Um, with that, it weighs us very heavy, um, but our in-town parks, we have about 46 acres. And then the college, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of land, which is, mm -hmm. which is a positive, and the college owns a lot. Well, the the college owns <laughs> oh, so oh, a lot. Okay. And that's um, why I think it's kind of, when you try to compare, well, it's not all park acreage is equal. Equal, mm -hmm. right. I mean, exactly. you have about 2,000 acres, but you don't have to develop any active space at all. So your master plans shoot for how long a range? Ten years. Ten years. Ten, Ten year range. Years. Okay. Um, facilities. For let's talk about facilities for a moment. Huntersville, I think, has more brick and mortar facilities than does Cornelius, and Cornelius has probably more than does Davidson. Um, how do you roll the facility management into? the parks and rec world how do you as you alluded to michael there's there's not enough, i always say there's not enough people not enough land and not enough money for anybody to do anything on their own anymore so i, I do know the youth sports share and, and whatnot but how do you do facility management and I, I think about the facility management also for the business community in in activities or leasing or meetings or things like that is there an opportunity there for the business citizens and do we also see more facilities coming online for anyone? And then roll North Rec Center and all that and enjoy the conversation. 
So, yeah. so at the Hotel Recreation Center, we do have a uh, facility partnership with Novant Health, mm -hmm. and uh, so they do they do come and do some of their training at the Hotel Recreation Center. Uh, so other businesses could rent space and do some training if it's you know whatever it might be. So there's opportunities for that. Uh, HFFA is obviously a separate enterprise fund, so that's not under the Parks and Rec Department. It is separate enterprise fund to uh, cover its costs, which it has been that way for about 20 years now. Um, even though Huntersville has more brick and mortar than Curtis and Davis, I think all of us compared to our counterparts have a lot less based on a lot of the partnerships and the gyms that we have. We don't own brick and mortar on a lot of the facilities. So out of the eight indoor facilities we have in the gymnasium, so only one do we actually own and operate, which is not a recreation center. But yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for businesses if it's from using space for staff training, um, <laughs> Or if it's looking for sponsorships to get their uh, business out for events and so forth, there's a lot of opportunities for that. I'll go next. With, um, it's with our new town hall and community center at 251 South Street, that has opened up a lot of windows for us because before that, we had our pump house really small in the greenway, loved it, but that was all our indoor space. Now, with the town hall and community center, we do have space we can rent, and we rent to nonprofits, businesses, individuals. All different sized meeting rooms in there which is another great thing to have um, but you asked about adding facilities if you've been to 251 it's a historic used to be a school um, started out as the davidson school and um, so it's nice and it's got a lot of character so come by and see it and see the character and the history that we kept in the building but you'll notice there's a building behind that was a gymnasium um, built after the original school building but we received Two, or we received $2 million in county ARPA funds to renovate that gym. So with $2 million from the county and then a million from, from our CIP, we're going to renovate that gym. And right now we're in design. We're in a design build phase for it. Hopefully have it open next summer. Um, that's kind of the plan. We don't know for sure, um, but we are right now in the design phase. So that's exciting. We'll add that. That will be our first indoor <laughs> active facility in the town of Davidson. So really excited about that. Um, but we rely heavily on joint use and partnership, especially with Cornelius with our basketball league, because none of us have enough gym space to house a appropriate basketball league. Uh, uh, once we get that gym, we could, but it would be like two teams playing each other each weekend. So it doesn't benefit either of us to be on our own. So, so I'm, I'm sitting here in envy because Michael does have a standalone recreation center that he owns and operates. Lisa's get, uh, Leslie's getting ready to get one uh, with the new town hall center and the gym. Meanwhile, in Cornelius, we don't have, own any brick and mortar mm -hmm. recreation facilities. Everything is through joint use with CMS. So Bailey Middle School and J.D. Washington Elementary School are two. It's a wonderful partnership. It's a way to sort of uh, uh, combine resources to get things done cost effectively and efficiently. But the problem is that we can't do any programming while school's in session at either of those. Now, looking forward, what I'm really excited about is as part of the CMS bond referendum package that passed if they're going to rebuild Cornelius Elementary School. Well, we're in talks with CMS about adding a recreation center component, and they have a model right now that they're developing down at Burns Avenue Elementary School, where the recreation center is part of the school, but can be isolated and cordoned off from the rest of the school so that you can do daytime programming in there. So we're going to hopefully partner with them and follow that Brunings Avenue model so that we can get in there to do some daytime programming. Right. That's one of the things I was going to mention too, you the council's building a new town hall. And so the old town hall will be renovated as a community space that Parks Rec will operate. So that the chamber room will be blown out. If they've been in space, that can hold about 160 folks. They'll have two rooms on the outside. So that's even more opportunities for them. Businesses, it's hard to find an indoor space to hold 150, 160 people in this area. So that will be a huge benefit of new town being built and then the whole town being renovated. So but that's going to be, that will have three or four years. So a couple of observations with the town of Davidson and South Street and what it's done. And the auditorium there, which is a little gym that most folks don't know about, particularly in the business world, 
How, how many, we, the, it was an old school, and so the structure still stands, and there was an auditorium that is fabulous. I mean, you really don't see auditoriums anywhere anymore. How many, how many can be seated in that auditorium? You know, 300? So there's another opportunity for business, business venues, I think, that you could come in and have a symposium or, or whatever, but it's a great, great Great facility and, and and good opportunity. I guess you go through Parks and Rec mm -hmm. in the leasing of that. Mm -hmm. So the trend, if you if I look at Davidson and South Street, if I think about Cornelius and the Kane Center and Town Hall and Cornelius Elementary, all on that little area, and Huntersville and what it's doing, it's downtown. I rode through Cary um, last week just to see their park and downtown. Mm -hmm. I think to get to your supreme level of, of efficiency, maybe not counting the acreage aspect of it, it seems to me that people want to be in the center of town and you're trying to bring facilities back to the center of town to bring people together. Is that a fair assumption? And is that part of your master plan process? So at Hartsel, we do have a goal. So also we built Edwards Park and it's not a huge park, but it is a location to do a lot of our events downtown. Also, we just completed the downtown Greenway. But we, all, we also got a vision of expandable over park, which is in the middle of downtown. It's about eight acres, but there's some potential in the future. If land became available to add another eight acres to that. And that downtown park at Cary I went to last week is all oh, amazing. It, 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 it. Now, that's probably a little bit dirtier than my vision. That's $68 million. So that's, you know, big I, chunk of change. But it, yeah. that is a perfect example of how that place was packed in the middle of the day. So we do have it. Our master plan does talk about the downtown area and doing more downtown when yeah. it comes to facilities and, and programs. So, 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 no, I'm sorry. If I could, that, so plans always intersect, right? You build off of existing plans, old plans to make new ones. And so our comprehensive parks master plan that was just developed. We're also working in the town on the downtown master plan. That will incorporate the emerald necklace so that people have a way to bike and walk into downtown instead of hopping in a car and parking, which puts a lot of pressure on the downtown area to provide all that parking. So the emerald necklace cuts through it. But also what they're looking at doing is creating a whole festival street atmosphere through there so that we can have more downtown events and have it be the gathering place in the area. So I'm excited about participating in that process. They're, they're trying to get the consultant mm -hmm. line done now, but that's really gonna create some synergy in downtown, not only for uh, new development as it relates to residential development, but also for business opportunities as well. Um, let's talk about bond packages for just a minute. Uh, I, I'm, I'm aware that Hunters will just pass the bond package, so $8 million, and that goes to Parks and Rec. Is that earmarked at this point or not? Well, so right now, the, the town board is discussing the CIP, which looks at that part of that $8 million. So we do have a couple of projects that the Parks and Rec Commission has recommended. Um, one is a new park. So the town bought 25 acres of Rama Church Road. Five of those acres is for a new fire station. The other 20 acres will be a park. And so part of this upcoming year's budget is to start planning design in that park. Uh, another one is potential opportunity. We have a good partnership with the fire station. So fire station number four, McElwee, is about seven acres they didn't need. So that fire station was opened up four or five years ago. So the rest of that acres could be used for a park, but also like a charter school has bought land right next door to that same parcel. And we're talking about a joint partnership, doing a tennis complex out there in the back part of their property they won't need to use. Maybe that could be some trails. So that's another project that we're looking at. Once again, plan and design and start the next fiscal year. And then also mm -hmm. splash pad at Wayne Park. That's something we talked to the community about. So we, we feel that's part of the progress. So those are three of the ones we're talking about. This next fiscal year that would be using some of the bonds. Some of that money. Yeah. Leslie, I know we did, we passed a bond package in 2016. Mm -hmm. Has that been, some of it went to Bay Street. Mm -hmm. We still have some available, but we haven't done a Parks and Rec bond specific since then, have we? I know we've done the Correct. South Street. Mm -hmm. And we're still, we're still spending some of that money. We earmarked them for projects, but we did do Baby Park. Um, we're doing a phase three at Plum Creek and food pickleball shelters and 
um, bocce, and then we are also like we had it separated into parks and greenway, um, and our greenway projects we're still working on in 2027 River Run to Summers Walk, uh, the River Run neighborhood to the Summers Walk neighborhood, and then a West Branch Rocky River Carolina Thread Show in 2028. It's not about Cornelius in the bond. So we have not had a bond referendum since 2013. And do I recall us, there was a large part of that bond package that did work towards the Greenlands and the MLX? That's correct. It, it did. So we were able to develop Antiquity Greenway, Plum Creek Greenway, another phase of the Powell Creek Greenway in through there. And um, so we got quite a few miles in there making connections into and out of Davidson on both the north and south end of there to get mileage on the ground. Um, so that was very good. Also, we built James Hoyt Wilhelm Park, which is behind Cornelius Elementary School, which is a youth um, athletic facility, as I like to say. It's where the youngest of the young go to learn a sport for the first time because it's t-ball fields, flag football, what have you. So we were able to get that done along with some park improvements. Um, so it's been a long time. We do have a little bit of bond money left for Greenway that runs from Smithville Park down to J.B. Washington Elementary School. Uh, that we had a grant through NCDOT and long story short, they had some funding issues and they had to pause the work on the project. And then a little thing called COVID hit, which kind of shut us down a bit, but we got it started back up and the town is now partnering with Mecklenburg County because we didn't have all the funding to get it done, but Mecklenburg County um, was willing to come in and assist with that. So we got that one back off, uh, off the ground and running. Uh, one thing that I, I want to point out that's important, and I know, I know Leslie and Michael do this too, but um, there's never enough to do what you need to do at all. Um, so our staff has been good at leveraging whatever resources we can to try to try to get things done uh, as cost efficiently as possible for the town. So either getting grants or partnerships is critical to, to getting miles on the ground or parks on the ground. With it, uh, we had five and a quarter million and we were able to get more than double that in grants and partnership funds. It was about 110%. Uh, greater funding that we had in the yeah. answer. Yeah. So as it relates to Greenlands and, and the county, this rolls into how do we all work together? Um, the quote used to be a mile, a million dollars a mile for a Greenway. Is that closer to two million? Two million, million, two million a mile to build your Greenway. And that's for that's for basic yeah. Greenway. If you put any boardwalk on it, yeah. you're yeah. doubling. So the example is so we the Torrance Creek trip number two Greenway that we finished up in the next couple of months that actually goes from Torrance Creek Greenway to Rosewood Meadow goes under 77 to the parking lot. 90% was concrete boardwalk, one mile, a little one mile connection, seven million dollars. Seven million. So it varies greatly depending on the, the, the terrain the, where you are. But I, I have to say this about that Greenway. I, uh, that is the nicest stretch of Greenway I have seen in this in North Mecklenburg, and I've been on them all pretty much. So, is there a master plan for the state of North Carolina that pulls Greenways together, or is it just the county? And and do we does North Mac? I, mean, I, I know the answer. They certainly recognize our Greenways and participate and help fund with it. But is there a plan to have? Connectivity all throughout Mecklenburg County by via Greenway. And then there's also regional. The Carolina Thread Trail is multiple counties in South Carolina. So the county has their plan that includes our plan as well. But then the Carolina Thread Trail has multiple counties. And then the state does have statewide trails, but it doesn't connect the whole state and every county. At one point, and I looked last night, I couldn't remember, there was a trail plan movement for, uh, to connect Mooresville to Charlotte. Yep. The same trail. Just seen. Mm -hmm. what, where do we stand? Where do we stand on that? They're about to do some more planning on it. Yeah. It's called the scene. The scene. And it will go Mooresville to Charlotte? Straight yeah. shot down. 
21 or something? Actually, up to Statesville. Up to Statesville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the way down. I mean, truly, does it follow 21? Is that there, there's 800 that's feet what they're them. trying to do? There's 800 feet of them on the ground in the Brighton development. Because I can't mess up. A part of the scene is about, we, but no, it's it's going to be a challenging one because it cuts to the heart of all the towns. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I mean, for the most part, it's not going to be through the woods like you think as a green way. I think it's going to be a more urban trail because they're going straight through downtown. I think there might be opportunities if if commuter rail comes say. that a good portion of that could follow follow the train track, yeah. follow the trail. Too. So I think that's a long term vision, and it's going to. Take a long time. Though. And, and mm -hmm. we have bits and pieces in Cornelius too. Mm -hmm. So um, in front of Bailey's Glen uh, subdivision and Bailey Road Park, there's a 10 foot wide path. That's part of the scene. And then once you get into downtown Cornelius, there's a multi use path around the Harris Teeter and Antiquity Greenway mm -hmm. is part of that. And then I know Davidson's mm -hmm. working on a South Street. Greenway mm -hmm. or something. The Greenway from where the Kincaid and our our old office was the pump house. Mm -hmm. Going out behind the ball fields up to Main Street. And then oh, so and so do, you, scene. do you have a, a percentage? Is there a number of completed versus land? Complete on the ground greenways completed. How how much do we have to do to have full connectivity? Honestly, well, we got a long ways to go because we've got 64, 64 square miles. I think we have 60 plus acres in our plan. I'm 60 plus miles in our plan. There's only probably three or four on the ground, 13 more coming in the next two, three years uh, in different phases. So it's going to be a, it's a long, long term vision. Most of the trails are being built where actually connecting people are there. So if you go to the each side of Huntersville, where it's not eligible to develop yet, mm -hmm. there are really no greenways. We're trying to focus more on where the people are at. Sure. So I, I would say, sorry, Liz. Well, I was, uh, for the three of us, I think our biggest point is just connecting our three towns mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things that Huntersville has that Davidson residents will go to, and same thing, Cornelius. And so if we can continue to work those connections to be able to get from Davidson to Huntersville pretty easily. Um, via the greenway system, I, I, I think that's our goal. Yeah. yeah. So we have 36 miles all together in our brand new master plan for greenways and multi-use paths. We're maybe about a third of the way done right now with that, but we're getting ready to add more miles shortly. For example, and I remember hearing Bill this morning about Sefton Road and all the potholes and everything over the past few months. Um, there will be multi-use path along there. That's part of them, both necklace. Right. As a matter of fact, the county is getting ready to open up about another half to three quarters of a mile section of Greenway that will tie in the North Regional Recreation Center to existing Caldwell Station Creek Greenway down by Pool Place. So there, the, there's progress being made, but there's still a long way to go. I will say on the Emerald Necklace piece, that is 13 to 14 miles altogether. We have a little over 10 on the ground. So we're about three quarters of the way done. But the thing to keep in mind with the necklace is that it, it does connect to the other towns yeah, and right. leverages some of their pieces to make that loop. You know, one of the things I'm very excited yeah. about, uh, so the count, a lot of the greenways and parts of the county is building for the most part. So we've got two projects that we're managing, the uh, park greenway that goes to the business park and then a greenway that goes to North Mac. The other projects that the county's working on, a lot of times we're, we put money towards the design. They're they're actually constructed that will speed the projects up, but I like to call it the seven mile greenway. So probably in the next three or four years, you'll be able to go from downtown Huntersville and all the way to Burkdale and you'll avoid, we have two CRTP programs re received recently. One is a tunnel on the Highway 21 near the parking lot. Obviously, 77 has a tunnel near the parking lot already in. Uh, and then we've also got a CRTP program for a bridge over 73 to get the Greenway to Burkdale and then connect them to Cornelia. So just envision maybe three or four years, you can leave 760 for the downtown on where the Greenway Trailhead is, head out west, Go under 21, so you don't have to interfere with any traffic. Go under 77, go under Gilead twice, and go over Highway 73. So you're going seven miles. You're avoiding all the major roads, and you're avoiding, I think, it's like 110,000 average daily vehicle trips. You don't have to interfere with that great crossing out. 
10, 15 years ago. I don't think anybody thought that would happen because a lot of times at that time, 10, 15 years ago, NCDOT wasn't really accommodated to pedestrians, but that's completely changed. But the last couple of projects, originally they told us we couldn't go under 21. They came back to us, yes, we can do it. <laughs> Not going to do a bridge over 73. Came back, to, yes, you can do it. So I think that's really changed the ability for towns to be more connected for sure. <laughs> And, and as you heard, walkability, bikeability is important to all three towns, and that's just not unique for this area at all. That's across the nation. Um, people don't want to have to get into the car all the time. I know I live in Winfield in Huntersville. If I need to pick up a loaf of bread or something, I'm going to go take a walk and go up to Publix or Harris Teeter and come on back. And there's a lot of folks doing that in my neighborhood right now. It's amazing. But the other thing, too, I know that we were talking about impact to businesses and whatnot, but you know, I constantly read that businesses are always looking to relocate in areas that have a very uh, uh, vigorous and um, expansive parks and recreation system, ability to get outside, and that these are some of the things that they look at when they make these relocation decisions, it's not always the dollars and cents, it's about the importance of the employees being in an environment where they can get out there and decompress a bit. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we're all trying to do that right. here mm -hmm. in the Lake Norman area. Bill, you got a great point. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, going back to an earlier question and getting off the ringway, going back to an earlier question, um, and I, the answer is sitting over by left, I'm sure. Is there a consolidated list where each town has their available rent spaces? Uh, I mean, it's not rent spaces, event spaces, and do the listings include technology, camera, et cetera? And I think Visit Lake Norman tracks that, but do y'all want to speak to that? As far as the facilities, um, and all of you all know, it's on our website, but we also have a friend um, of the facilities that we have in our three towns. <laughs> Um, for you all that may or may not know me, I'm Sally Ashworth with Visit Lake Norman. And what um, we are targeted to do is to bring events into our three towns, let them stay in our hotels, eat in our restaurants, enjoy our parks, and then go home. So what, we are very regional and um, state-minded, but yet we work very closely with our three parks. And, you know, when we spoke about sports tourism, I mean, you know, I, I I just can't say enough how important it is that our partnerships are so strong with our towns. And Leslie, I was just over at the community center last Tuesday night with the Main Street books where they had a book signing. So um, I did, you know, we've been over there at your all's new facility anyway, but we used, utilized your Fisher's Park, Fisher Farms Park. But I mean, that is what, what we do. That, the tennis, um, we've, we've held the, the U.S. tennis um, for 11, hours with, 11 years now, and that's unprecedented when you speak to other organizations like ours that host these events. And the reason why we do that is because we really capture the volunteers and what, what we need to do to look at our landscape and to make sure that these people that are coming in are very satisfied because they continue and it's repeat business. And Davidson College, one of our biggest assets with the tennis, we utilize that. Um, and to hear the tennis sports coming on even more, but we tapped into um, our River Run and um, North Stone. So we do utilize um, what we have um, in our three towns and very, very appreciative of all of your all's work. Uh, working with county, state, and federal government, who's the easiest? <laughs> None of the above. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would say county parks are uh -huh. right. probably because we rely heavily on county parks. I mean, we all do. Yeah. Um, yeah, county. And those are important relationships to you know, keep strong. And is the Mecklenburg County still one of their biggest charges is finding open space and land? They're mm -hmm. still in the in the buying. Do they do they understand the market? Do they understand the price of land? 
Yes. Well, as much as they buy, they have to understand it. They do. We want to continue that. Um, let's see, business engagement, special events, special events in which you all collaborate on. The Mayor's Fitness Challenge is one that I, that comes to mind. I know Parks and Rec, I know we do bas basketball and baseball together. Huntersville's Bigger has its own. I, we still do Davidson Youth Baseball and and basketball together. No, we just do basketball. Together. Just basketball. Mm -hmm. And then something all three of our towns do through the Parks and Rec Recreation Department is like Morning Teen Council. Um, and that's all three of that. I think that's our only one that we do all three of us together. And can you explain what's, what is the Teen Council? It, it's kind of a forum for teens. Um, I believe it's 13 and up to be engaged in community service. That's that's a big component of it. They run their meetings as we do with our town board. So they learn leadership. Um, so it's a great opportunity for those teens to um, kind of prepare themselves for the future and, and to help their resume and to get them ready for, for if they're wanting to go to college or what their next step in life is. It sounds a little bit like a precursor to your Lake Norman, what's it called, the leadership. Leadership like Norman? Leadership like Norman with the high school students. Mm -hmm. And how do teens find, are they, do they apply, are they nominated, mm -hmm. how, and they come from all three towns? Yeah, they apply, they, they can go on any of our websites, mm -hmm. Google it, and we all have the link Very on our site. Mm -hmm. And another neat thing, just this last weekend, Lake Norman hosted the State Teen Council Conference, so we had over 80 teens come in town to, to bring all the groups together across the state and uh, have fun at many of our regional facilities. That's great. That, we, we need to get that news out. Sometimes I feel like some of these events and like the USTA, unless you're involved in these meetings, the, the rest of the population, unless Dave reports on it, which I appreciate so much everything you do, you are our local newspaper. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't get the message. I never knew. Who knew we had the state team council meeting? That's... Um, there are a lot of big draws that, that come to this area through the Parks and Rec and through the Visit Lake Norman that the Chamber's involved in. Bill. Uh, Bill Leonard had a question of Matrium Health. Bill? Yeah, hey, thank you. And uh, really uh, appreciate the, the shout uh, out for the... Can you hear me? Yeah, so uh, appreciate All the right. shout Do out. Do a share and chat because obviously I, we're, not, we're not hearing the sound. Let me see oh, if okay. I've got... Uh, that's weird. How about now? Yep. All right. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate the shout out on the uh, U.S. Uh, Tennis Association event. And we do a fantastic job for a weekend. Right. So that's an event. We can all rally around it. We got a great destination conveniently in the middle of the state. Uh, so the USTA has thrived for a weekend. So as a lifelong tennis player whose mom played till she was 86 years of age, um, tennis is grossly underserved in, in Mecklenburg County. Uh, we fumbled on two big uh, projects. The last one with uh, uh, Mr. Navarro uh, and other people have been rejected by Mecklenburg County in, in developing uh, tennis centers that Mecklenburg County deserves. Uh, and I grew up uh, in Greensboro playing on my high school tennis courts uh, anytime I wanted. So when you go to North Meck High School, when you go to Huff High School, the courts are locked with a padlock. Uh, now, I'm an excellent fence climber, so it's never been a particular barrier for me, but it's dangerous. Uh, and and the lack of, con uh, you know, the, the one um, celebration that we can have is the... Uh, the great partnership at Spartan Park uh, between a, a charter school and um, and and that great facility in Huntersville, which is so needed. Um, we are scrambling. And uh, the, the biggest issue is it is absolutely uh, a diversity, equity and inclusion because the vast majority of all tennis is played on private clubs in Charlotte. And it doesn't have to be that way. And it's not that way. Uh, in almost any of our sister counties. And as a native North Carolinian who is educated here and worked all over the state, I'm not aware of another county, another school system uh, that locks their courts like CMS does, uh, opening them every now and then for a special weekend. But uh, they lock them and uh, we're not allowed to use the courts. Frankly, I paid for a lot of them. I pay uh, 
a significant chunk of uh, property tax here. So uh, that's also an infuriation. But anyway, any update on the chance to have a better partnership that is more inclusive with CMS and the courts that are there and underutilized the vast majority of the time? Not in regards to, not in regards to CMS. We are working on a other, similar to what we did with CSD for the tennis complex with hundreds of working on one with Lake Island Charter School, uh, which will be eight courts. Uh, the time we're not sure about over the next couple of years, I think they're trying to go ahead and get their new elementary schools squared away and what the cost is going to be. Yeah, we haven't had much success at North Mac Park. I mean, North Mac Park, North Mac High School, um, or the Palocs come off of there. I'm not sure about Hub. Yeah, I, so I can speak about Hub. So, Bill, you're right. We Hub is used as part of that USTA tournament, or uh, the the uh, tournament that comes in, the state tournament that LNTA hosts. Um, but uh, the town of Cornelius does get access to those courts over the summertime, uh, weekday hours. We put our uh, youth uh, tennis camps out there in the summertime. So it's always a touchy subject when dealing with CMS and high schools. Part of the problem um, that they raise is that with the high school, everything going on between all the athletics, extracurricular activities, social activities, it, it, the school's not like seven until three o'clock and it's shut down. They go well into the evening with the activity. So they have some very deep concerns about the public coming out onto a campus and security issues is what they relate to us. But I am pleased that we were able to get some access out there. Uh, on the tennis front, I'll also mention to you, we're getting ready to put out the bid um, a project at Bailey Road Park. We're going to take the existing three tennis courts, convert them over to 10 pickleball, but then we're adding six lighted tennis courts. And six is a critical number in order to host leagues and tournament activities. Anything less than that, then LNTA can't use. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that because now we have the potential to be hosting uh, some tournament activities out at Bailey for both tennis and pickleball. Hey, thank you. That sounds great. And uh, yeah, I guess I know obviously CMS is scared of a lot. I'm not sure what the risk is compared to all of our sister counties. Uh, that <laughs> School schedules are pretty similar in high schools across the state. Uh, but anyway, I do appreciate the update and I appreciate the difficulty y'all have. And, uh, and I'm glad to hear some of the wins you've got. So thank you much. And that will be, they'll be well used, I promise. Yes, sir. Um, okay, on that note, Bill, turn your turn your volume off. Pickleball. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have facilities coming up. We have private facilities coming up. We have a need of sports everywhere. You have locked sports here, locked up. But you have pickleball, and it's coming. Um, what is what are your your master plan events say about pickleball and court surface? Yeah, so, like that. Oh, that, I was, so I just mentioned that we wrote part yeah. of 10 courts in our master plan. What we've identified is a need for 16 altogether between now and 2034. 16 dedicated pickleball 16 courts. dedicated pickleball wow. courts altogether. Right now, we only play on hybrid courts. Mm -hmm. They're tennis courts. We drop lines and then there's rollout nets. And they give you a headache. Mm -hmm. yeah. so the pickleball player that gives mm -hmm. you a headache. Well, <laughs> a little more challenge and from tennis. Too. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, get it from both. That's right. So um, we're looking at doing 16 dedicated courts. At Bailey? Uh, 10 at Bailey, and then we have six others identified at Problems Park in the future. Is there a conversation about pickleball tournaments, Sally? Have you heard people approach us? We do not have the facilities yet to host a... But is uh, that conversation out there in the... Um, we have met with them, um, with um, the the state um, pickleball association. Uh, but you know, when we do those things, we have to have the landscape and the uh, the destination set for them to come here to look at it before we can bring them. And, and we we have six pickleball courts at Old Road, uh, permanent ones, and there are folks who do tournaments out there now. Is it really drawing people from anywhere? Probably not. Right. more local, yeah, local. Like, yeah. so we get a lot of those uh, uh bill you want to read it again 
<laughs> we're taking one more tennis court at Holbrook and adding two more pickleball. This it is really uh, you know, intense. So that would give us that would give us eight pickleball courts at Holbrook. Uh, we anticipate the two parts we're talking about designing next year at uh, on Ron Church Road and McElwain that there'll be some type of pickleball. The thing now we got to be careful about is how close are their homes it to is. the pickup uh -huh. points yeah. because that's become an issue all over the country now and there's people suing yeah. people and all this yeah, other stuff. Really so weird. at Holbrook or Fortune, we got a lot of woods, a good buffer. We haven't really had any points for that. But some other locations, it might be tricky how we go about doing that, how we solve the noise. Yeah. Well, and I know for Huntersville and Davidson, we with the county have Bradford Regional Park. Huntersville maintains and operates it. Um, we put in some funding every year, 20%, um, and get 20% use them in the county. And so that, we're talking about redoing the master plan or not redoing, just updating it because it's from 2000. 20 years ago. Yeah, it's 20 years old because there is a lot of land out there mm -hmm. still. And so that would be a great place to put possibly pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. um, because then it's closed, we could do some tournaments out there because it is not close to homes. Right. <laughs> you know, it's it large is. property. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So um, Plum Creek, how many pickleball courts you? Three. Three okay. pickleball and then mm -hmm. resurface the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. Tennis courts, Bill. So then everybody has their separate play right. for now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to, well, we don't have time to touch on that. Uh, programming. Favorite programming, summer sports, summer camps. Summer camps is probably the the biggest uh, employment base. We need you need you need counselors, you need teachers for summer camps, summer programs. We contract all ours out, and we're always looking for contractors for summer camps for regular programs throughout the year. Um, and I think they do a lot of contracting too. So if you any of you know somebody that offers something special or unique, we'll take the unique ones. Um, and more non-traditional parks and recreation. <laughs> they can have all the more traditional ones. But no, I'm just kidding. So, so, so we always need um, camp counselors for our day camp, as well as uh, check-in, check-out activities at our sport camp. So if, if there are any teens interested in a summertime job, we are still hiring. We're getting close to rounding out our 2024 uh, schedule, though. And we're pretty, we're fortunate. We have a lot of some camp counselors come back every while with teachers and so forth, like a lot of the other ones. So we're, we're more high and more part time park folks working the parks to help out with maintaining and cleaning the parks. So we got a couple full time openings as well. But yes, yeah, summer camp is, I don't look forward to when it's sign up time because a lot of people get turned away. And I got mm -hmm. moms coming along just looking forward to crying. So that's never a good Right. We need more, more yeah, places for our kids. Yes, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's our biggest challenge is summer camp and the amount of people we have to turn away for your traditional summer camps. Um, one thing that all the towns touch on, I don't know, I, I'm not sure of all the facility usage, but I know in Davidson we have um, Herman Park and the one behind Davidson Day mm -hmm. that you can lease paddle boards boats to come out on those that lake, which is the east side of 77, a little more passive lake, so to speak. Um, are there opportunities for people to get to the water through Huntersville Parks and Rec and Kearney's Parks and Rec? So it'll be through the county. Yeah. The county has like access. Yeah, Jaton, Blythe, and Ramsey. Okay. You, you can access. The Do they areas. have boards and boats, little paddle boats for rent? Or the, just... um, the Lake Norman Community Sailing Center at Blythe Landing mm -hmm. offers a very convenient membership package where you have access to paddle boards, kayaks, canoes if you want, but mm -hmm. there is no rental program through the county yet mm -hmm. under those three parks. You have to go to Blythe Plantation for that. They do yeah. some programming down there. Great. Well, that's our, any questions from any, any of the group? Who's that? In here. Okay. Robert, you had a question? Well, I just want to touch two things as far. I mean, I could use some part time work, so maybe I can be a camp counselor. Now, I'm already in touch with Justin Jackson for, for, for doing um, some summertime programs, but if I had the information, where you guys were talking about renting out the facilities, I'm trying to start um, up my business and I do birthday parties. I mean, that's my general source of income. So I'm starting to send out a weekly or monthly newsletter so I could let 
hundreds of people know that you know the yeah, one hundred and one hundred and birthday party that direct sent off to the land birthday mm -hmm. party. Right. Yeah. Do you have a card or something? Yeah, yeah. I got a card right. here. Share a card. I also work at the Huntersville Hawthorne Pizza every um, Thursday night, stuff like that. So, man, I can let some of those parents know. Mm -hmm. Just get the word out. Yeah, yeah. I was going to mention something because I know one of the things was about does it benefit when the three towns get together to get something at get something done? Right. One of the best examples of that is 2008 when the counties. Yeah, the card's still on there. He's part of it. So, in 2008, when the county was developing their bond package. Uh, the three mayors and Council Quincy Davidson came together and approached the county saying, well, we need a large regional rec center. That, and that got added to the bond package yep. and was the biggest project in there. So from a standpoint of the towns come together, get something done, that's the perfect example. It is a perfect example. Yeah. That was a heavy lift and, and yeah. appreciation goes out to everyone because that you ride by that, that facility and it is packed. It is the cars awesome. are there all yeah. day. All during the opening hours, which is which is great. I think you know one one thing I've always thought about Parks and Rec, or not always, but since COVID ran its course, it did push people outside, mm -hmm. and it did turn people to more health oriented, more holistic. Get outside. I appreciate the past parks a little bit more, but um, what you all do is it touches the lives of everybody: mm -hmm. children, adults, businesses in this county, and. As you all have explained, you, you're engaged and you're involved in county work, transportation work, you're, you're involved with CMS. Every entity that we use and utilize and depend on every day is um, touched by our Parks and Rec. So we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Lake Norman Chamber. And next month, join us for the Three Towns Fire Chiefs. We'll have the Fire Chiefs, then we'll have the Town Managers, and that will conclude our Three Towns Management System. And remind everybody that this weekend, Lock Norman Highland game. So just go out, support Rural Hill uh, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday.